can share the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you'd be kind enough to call the roll. Uh, yes, I will. Dale Livingston. Here. Tim Nath. Here. Dick Declawa. Not here. Joe Cower. Not here. Larry Lennon. Here. Justine Simaroli. Here. And Mike Tomer. Here. Okay, welcome all. Thank you for, for being here. Um, let's see, uh, minutes from uh, February 24th, 2020 meeting. Um, I take a motion to approve. Motion and a second. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Um, any comments? Okay. Um, get a motion to approve the minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. Minutes approved. Um, take a motion to approve the minutes from the April 27th meeting. I'll make a motion. Okay, Mike. Second. second. Yep, second. Tim. Okay. Any comments, questions? All in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, there was no meeting in March, so um, that's that being done. I've got a, a couple of comments here, and and um, we'll uh, we'll get started. Um, <clears throat> our course of business this evening is to to present the remaining planning issues and discuss them. Um, the issues were identified as a result of a re review of the Bridgeville Comprehensive Plan. <clears throat> the Planning Commission started its review in late 2019 of the started the review of the uh, in late 2019 of the Comprehensive Plan. After reviewing the plan, the Commission identified some issues which we deemed may need may still need some attention. On February 24th, the Planning Commission meeting, we compiled some of those issues from the plan review <clears throat> as a result of the compilation. It is our intent to use these issues as a starting point for discussion and potential planning issues of the future, kind of to create a to-do plan, uh, to-do list, if you, if you will. Members of the Planning Commission have over the last few months taken, uh, have taken issues and conceptualized them for the purposes of tonight's discussion. Our discussions this evening are focused on um, potential scope and potential solution of these concepts. Over the course of the next few meetings, the commission will discuss and fine tune the concepts and prioritize them for planning purposes. We will present and discuss each concept one at a time. It's my hope that the planning commission, we can review the remaining concepts this evening. If not, we will continue to the review concept review at our next meeting. Let me emphasize, this is a very initial discussion, kind of a brainstorming, if you will, of these concepts for long-term planning. The planning commission, um, the planning discussion regarding the concepts will be ongoing as it will take many more discussions to get through this planning process and to take any kind of action. The meeting tonight will be kept to 60 minutes. We will have a public comment period for the last 10 minutes of the meeting, okay? Um, Tim, anybody else on the Planning Commission have any comments to, to make before we get started? Nothing here, Dale. Nothing here. Nope. Okay. Larry? No, I just assume that we're going to get an updated set once we're all through this. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, um, I, I think we should, you know, sit down and, and um, um, take some of the comments that we've heard and, and um, you know, put them back together and, and go from there. Um, so um, tonight, uh, the first 
first one is parking issues. Um, I spent a little time talking with the um, the um, parking authority. I, I spent an hour or so visiting with Joe down there and, and talking about issues and, and that type of thing. Um, some of the challenges, you know, some of the some of the parking issue complaints that I've heard at some of the um, at the um, council meetings and stuff. You know, it, it's hard to say that we have a parking problem. Um, I think there's some challenges in the borough. Um, some of the issues that, that we've run into that have been identified are, you know, consumers or, or um, employees parking in front of, of residential areas and then walking um, into the business district and leaving, taking away um, parking from the residences. Um, you know, it's, it's maybe more of a zoning enforcement issue um, from, from the sounds of things. Um, you know, from the discussions that I had with, with the parking authority, you know, some of the issues that they were facing is people parking, um, parking down on um, uh, Chest Street and that type of thing and, and hopping a bus or, or something like that and taking away parking from in front of residences. And when people came home, they had find, kind of challenges to find a place to park. So, um, to kind of fully identify the parking issues and challenges in the borough, um, I suggest to uh, perform maybe a parking, a, a needs assessment community survey regarding parking in the, in the multiple use district, um, reviewing uh, maybe the, the um, planning commission could review the zoning ordinances regarding the parking requirements in Bridgeville Borough. Um, Dale, could, could, uh, Cheryl, can you hit the play button so we get a full screen on that slide? Cheryl? You have to enable edit, I think, and then hit, uh, good night, good. just hit enable edit up with editing up at the top. And then down at the bottom right, yeah. uh, next to the left of the slider. My, my computer's just being slow. Hang on. Oh, okay, all right. It's just not. No, 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 not that. You want to hit the play button to the left of that. To your left. Right, right, right there. Right. That one. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Great. There it is. Thank you. Okay. So, um, planning commission to take and review uh, zoning ordinances regarding the parking requirements in Bridgeville for potential articles or sections to be updated. Um, you know, one another possible um, solution is, is involving having a workshop involving planning, uh, parking authority, planning commission, um, zoning commission, um, borough council and zoning officer and just kind of look at and, and see what sort of things um, we can do to to address some of the challenges. Um, and the other one is, is kind of a, um, a shot in the dark. Um, I, I used to live in a college town and we had issues with college students parking um, in the residential area, um, like what we've got going on in some of the fringe business districts here. And what they did was they created a, like a two hour parking from, from eight to four or something, and then you know uh, permit only from um, 401 to, you know, eight o'clock, 8 a.m. the next morning. Um, and I, you know, that creates its own set of issues, but um, that's just another um, possibility for, for a solution. Um, solution partners, the Bridgeville Parking Authority, Borough Manager, Zoning Officer, um, Borough Council, Planning Commission, community members. Um, possible funding is rel gonna be relatively inexpensive um, and value is, is you know, just gonna create, the, can create um, you know, better value in, within the community. So, um, commissioners, comments, feedback, suggestions? Yeah, a couple of questions, Dale. I'm, I'm wondering from your, from your sit down with the parking authority that you referenced, was there sentiment that, yep, there's issues that need to be addressed, 
or did you kind of have to go searching for issues? How big of a problem is it? I know we've had people come to planning commission over the last two years, very specific people with, you know, lived in certain areas and were tired of, of parking away from home and walking, but um, how pervasive is the issue or is this a solution in search of a problem or is there a problem here? Well, parking authority doesn't deem that there's a problem. Um, you know, they've got a plan to, to expand, um, you know, the parking lot down there by birds in the future. Um, but, you know, the, what they're, you know, what they're suggesting is, is they've got a couple people down on um, Pickman Street that are beyond the, um, beyond the, the, the paid parking and people will go down there and park and then they go down and go to Berg's or, or go to one of the bars or something for a couple hours and, and you know, homeowners come back and, and um, you know, it's kind of the fringe areas, mm. um, you know, and, and the, the, the issue up at the North End, um, St. Clair Street, you know, where the, where been the true, two, you know, kind of trouble spots that, are, that have been talked about. Dale, was there an ordinance that created the uh, parking meters on the residential streets, separate and apart from zoning? I, I don't know. That's a good question, Larry. Well, I assume there had to be. Uh, you know, make them um, enforceable. I mean, basically, you know, those were places that were meters, were metered to begin with, and they just took the meters down, and and you know, it's it's their pay system now. Yeah, you know, when you say metered to begin with, I'm not sure where begin with started with you, but I don't, there was a lot of years where there was nothing yeah. there. And I've often wondered if that hasn't created the situation uh, with the residents uh, uh, that own the homes on those streets. Uh, and I think one thing we might want to add here is that if there is in fact an ordinance, and again, I assume there is, that you add that to this list. I don't know that it would be covered under a zoning ordinance. Yeah, you know, it, it, seems, it seems to me that that where the meters are are the, in the the business the the, the zone business district. <clears throat> I mean, Dale, there are. I mean, there. To speaking to where there were meters, like on Murray Avenue. I mean, there were parking meters there, and it is still considered off street parking. And that was one of the that was one of the hot spots where you mentioned you know people coming into Pittsburgh parking or coming into Bridgeville parking and then taking the bus into town um, and that's why there was metered parking there to kind of discourage the long-term parking um, and now it's and now it's just the you have the, the kiosks now yeah so to answer your question Tim I'm not sure you know yeah. um, the, the you know the, the some of the some of the issues um you know at least from the parking authority's perspective um you know that it's it's a it's a zoning issue um in the fringe areas that that's you know not being enforced i'd be curious too from the council members on the call joe and bill and others um is this something that comes up routinely or very incrementally Uh, this is this is Bill. I, it comes up routinely. I mean, you you have uh, you, you mentioned some of the hot spots: St. Clair Street, Baldwin Street, Hickman Street, and uh, and the issues are what Mike said. You had people that were that would park there and jump on a bus and go into town, and you know, the parking spots were taken. So, um, you know, we 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 were trying to establish something on uh, St. Clair Street that it because of the businesses down there and, and them migrating up further up the street. The, the trouble was uh, building an ordinance where you didn't punish the residents as well and giving them the opportunity to park. Um, so, you know, we were, we were knee deep into looking at permitting that area and, and you know, do you give two vehicles or three vehicles? Uh, it's more complicated than, than it just sounds like, uh, you know, Hey, let, let's make it a, um, a permitted area so but it, to answer your question yes it, it's routine we, we hear yeah. the complaints a lot okay so there is a there is an ordinance that specifically addresses that type of parking in, in certain areas larry it's not all over like there isn't no, one, i understand but there is yeah. an ordinance i guess is the point and i 
and it, and I like this issue generally, and I just think that to fill it out, we ought to add whatever that ordinance or ordinances are to this list of things to look at. So, you know, we can, you know, if we're going to have this workshop, we can kick it around and come up with some ideas and you know, see if we can come up with some kind of a consensus to address it. Well, yeah, we we would welcome that. And, and looking through the through the um, zoning ordinance, I mean, parking's not just in one place; it's in three, two or three places. So it, it's going to, you know, we'll have to try and look at and address those issues too. And it is, you know, it, it may be one of those things that you know, um, it's just a matter of sitting down, getting everybody at the table, and and you know, just figuring out is there an issue isn't there an issue and and um, what are the challenges if there are any I have a question sure do we, do we have any idea what what occupancy business occupancy there is in Bridgeville in the available storefronts hmm. On are you asking how many employees I'm not no. sure I understand no I just would like to know, are all the businesses, business places on Washington Avenue occupied? Or is there still some vacant? In other words, I'm trying to figure out is in Bridgeville in its heyday, was there always a parking problem? Or is there, since there are so many vacant storefronts now, has it decreased? And is it a lesser problem than it was before? Or does it make any difference? Well, I don't think there's a lot of, I don't think there's too many vacant storefronts. I mean, the most of them, I mean, we have a pretty low, uh, you know, non-vacancy in our town. Um, I think that when you say heyday, you know, we don't have retail stores as we did back in the, you know, back in the day, you know, right. most of our businesses are either, you know, restaurants and, you know, a lot of professional buildings and stuff like that, you know, but, uh, you know, so you're not getting the foot traffic where the people are, you know, people are coming in. And I think that's one of the issues where the parking becomes an issue is people are coming in for very short periods of time. And, you know, they might be coming in for an hour or half hour and, you know, the parking becomes, becomes an issue. Yeah. It, it's been a topic of discussion for decades. And I know there's a pretty strong, feeling, you know, in a lot of quarters in the borough, you know, that the reason that we don't have a more successful central business district is inadequate parking. Right. Not taking a side one way or another, but, you know, I've heard that discussion over the years, and I think there's an element of sensibility to that. So I, I think, you know, I still think this is a key issue. Uh, it, it just keeps coming up year after year after year. So. Has anybody thought of a park and ride for mass transit for the PAP buses? Yeah, they've got them here and there and around. There's none. I don't know where you would put one in Bridgeville. There used to be one over at Star City. I don't know if it's still there or not. Okay. I mean, is there a potential for a Baldwin Street park and ride if that ever comes to fruition down the road? I don't know. That's a good question. Because the, the buses used to go down Baldwin Street all the time, at least when I was growing a million years ago. Yeah. Um, they used to go down Baldwin Street and then jog to the left and got, get on Bower Hill from there. So at least on that bus route, but I don't know, is that not the people causing the problem, the parking problems for St. Clair Street? Well, what, St. Clair Street wouldn't be, well, that's the one on Baldwin, Baldwin that's the, the 41 that goes to Pittsburgh that way. And then the one that goes to the would be with the 33 and the one. Okay. So. All right. Well, I, I don't want to get bogged down in a lot of discussion at this point in time. I mean, it's obviously something that, you know, we're either going to keep it on the list or not keep it on the list or, you know, move it up or down. But, okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's, there's obviously enough food for thought here. So um, unless anybody's got any serious objections, I'm going to move on. 
No, no serious objections. Though, just a last quick hit question: Do we have any experience in permitted parking within the borough over the past? Is that something that we've administered ever? Because I'm with you, costs feel very nominal here. It's legislation. It feels like zoning for the most part. But if you get into permitted parking, some percentage of overhead comes into managing that stuff and renewals and fees and whatever. Yeah, Tim, this is Bill. Yeah, that we used to have permits. Uh, okay. And, and so um, employees of certain businesses could buy a monthly uh, permit and park in, say, lot two or lot four. Okay. So something we've got some experience in. Yeah, years ago, but it, it was done. Okay. Anything else, Tim? Nope. Okay. I'm going to move on to. Um, Enhance small town charm while in, investing in the business district. Again, um, I, I didn't, you know, with with the um, pandemic, it was hard to get out and talk with people. But um, just kind of some thoughts that that um, Joe uh, Joe Cower initially brought up. You know, um, whoopsie, Jim. Um, you know the the gateway. Um, and directional community directional signage, um, you know, that's in the process. Um, it's just pending funding. Um, you know, work with uh, Allegheny County's surrounding communities to create a regional traffic improvement plan to better address the development in the surrounding communities. Um, adjust, that would address some of the issues um, for, for the traffic load coming through town. Um, you know, create a revitalization plan for the business district. I know that there was talk about trying to do something like that in the um, comprehensive plan. I'm not sure where that ended up. Um, you know, Joe suggested maybe um, adding street amenities, benches, that type of thing. Um, as far as a solution to, to you know, dressing up the town, um, convene a, a borough task force, um, business owners, residents, borough officials to address and identify challenges in the business district. Um, involve Washington Avenue businesses, property owners in long-term planning. Um, encourage economic development of vacant properties, buildings to utilize uh, and underutilized properties along the, the Washington Avenue corridor. Marketing downtown um, as, a, as a business district, as livable, walkable, um, and again, um, maybe review the the zoning and the mixed business um, mixed use business determine if there's anything that can be done to encourage um, business development. Um, possible solution partner uh, funding partners Southwest Community Chamber of Commerce PA State Association of Boroughs um, PA Department of Community Economic uh, Development um, Char West Cog Allegheny um, Bridgeville Park and Authority. Um, you know, potential dollars is, is, you know, small to medium, um, anticipated value of the community could be large is how I rated it. Feedback. Yeah, just one uh, quick point. Um, it's my understanding the borough had a, uh, some sort of a downtown business district committee uh comprised of business owners or property owners uh that was working with the county for uh facade upgrades some and it's not too many years ago and the reason i know about it is i sat on a similar committee in coriopolis uh and we would hear a lot about bridgeville uh from the county partners we were working with there i can tell you in coriopolis if you've been through there lately it's been quite successful uh, of course, the reason it's successful there is there was one guy with some money bought up most of the business district, put his own money into it, as opposed to using grants. But I guess the point I'm making is I think some piece of this has already been completed. And I'm just wondering if anybody's got any of the notes or records of that. I, I don't know. I, you know, I, that'd be a question for Lori. Um, yeah, she would have been involved. It was a question that I asked early on and, and didn't get much of a um, response, but I know, you know she's been out, she's been busy. 
Yeah, we have a friend that owns a business, uh, custom short years custom cremations, and I know uh, at one point she was involved trying to get money uh, from them for a facade upgrade. I'm not sure how that played out at the end of the day. I really kind of lost touch of that, but I do know uh, that she was involved uh, in that program here. She wasn't on the committee. She was trying to make use of the grant funds that they were trying to make available. Yeah, Larry, I know back probably six, seven years ago, we had a grant working with, um, it was a group in Allegheny County, but it wasn't with, um, it wasn't with like the businesses. It was, it was like a, it, it was a free grant, I guess. They came and worked with small towns. Uh, they did a lot with Beaver. And, you know, so we looked at a lot, a lot of stuff that they did with Beaver and it was about, you know, how do you, you know, how do you promote your businesses? You know, it was, it was all, a lot of it was standard stuff, you know, retail on the first floor, keep your professional offices on the second floor. Um, but, uh, I can, I can their money ran out so they didn't they stopped working with us i know. think that's the same group yeah so did they Allegheny produce, together Mike, did they produce a document at the end of the day or was it just a lot of notes and some was, facade renovations so I, you, I, can I, I don't know if you want more history on this but i i was on i remember it if you want okay. it just let me know sure go ahead pat uh, it was Allegheny Together. Uh, it was a program. Mary Wise uh, was uh, uh, spearheaded it while she was on council. Uh, as Mike indicated, it was a, uh, a grant that was from the Allegheny County Department of Economic Development. Uh, it was a partnership uh, that was with Allegheny Together. Uh, they came in and they worked on trying to uh, bring forth, uh, you know, uh, some improvements to the business district. Uh, there were facade grants. Um, a number of business owners applied to uh, Churchill's Custom Pet, uh, Churchill's Church Cremation, uh, Sarasnix, uh, a number of businesses applied. Some of them got them. Um, and as Mike Tomer uh, indicated, uh, the uh, uh, the partnership, uh, you know, uh, uh, ran out of funding, and uh, that was sort of the end of it. So... Uh, that's the so it, I think it, the Allegheny together rings a bell. So there were no documents produced that would serve as a springboard for this discussion. Uh, there were some, all right, there, there were some good pieces there. Um, I don't remember anything that really pulled together. Um, I could be wrong on that. I, I, it was also at the time that they were doing the, um, uh, the planters and the sidewalks. I believe that was right. Allegheny together was right around the same time. Um, as far as a redevelopment, the two different and separate issues, but uh, they were at the same time. Oh, yeah. uh, you know what? Let me look while you guys keep going. Okay. Yeah, if you have documents, Pat, that would be helpful. Did somebody remind me of the total price tag and all the signage work, the design stuff that was done a couple of years ago? I, I have 200 something in my head, but I don't know if that's grounded in reality or not. Are you talking about the KLA that we did? Yeah. Uh, the first piece of it was, you know, was just the design and the drawings. Yep. I think we spent, if anybody remembers correctly, I think it was around 20, 20,000, somewhere around there. Um, but to move forward, the next, the next step would be to get the actual engineering drawings and then have it set out to bid to, to, um, to see what it would cost to actually have the signs made. You know, and you would do it and it would be done in phases like you would do your main, you know, your entryway mm -hmm. coming to town first, like those two big ones. Um, and then like your signage along your main streets. And then as um, as as the, you replace signs along your you know other streets going up, say, Bank Street and Don uh, Bower Hill. And then you start on the side streets as well after okay. that. So we never got the estimate on the actual cost to implement. To do the whole town, yeah, you're talking. You're probably talking a couple hundred thousand dollars to go the whole town. But like I said, you would do it in phases. It would be done over years. Yeah, I mean this Excuse this me. one si signage aside, this one kind of lends itself towards stacking priorities and chunking them off. You know, as yeah. time budgets allow. Excuse me, 
I know um, Lori had told me it would take about uh, they the cost was about two hundred fifty thousand to do the signage through the okay. borough. Okay. Thank and that was several years ago, so I'm not sure what the price would be today. Yeah. But that was what it was before. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. You're welcome. So if you bite this whole thing off, Dale, you could very easily be in the three dollar signs. I know it's a pretty subjective rough order of magnitude that we're using here but right again you wouldn't have to do all or nothing on this one right and that's it's one of those things this would be one of those projects it was it's going to be it would go on the on the plan and it would be a, a three-year or five-year plan or or you know something like yep. that could be done in chunks yep okay okay anything else Okay, moving on. Pedestrian and safety issues in the borough. Hey, Dale, sorry, if I could just interject really quickly, just a reminder that, you know, we're capturing scores on the back end of these. So as things are fresh in the mind, if people got a scratch pad and, and grab thoughts so that we're not trying to retro think about, you know, what, what value we were attaching to these things. Good point. Um, pedestrian safety issues. Again, uh, we're getting back to that, that making um, Bridgeville more pedestrian friendly. Um, it can be a challenging time walk, walking through, navigating through Bridgeville, um, especially doing, due to increased traffic volume, um, poorly maintained sidewalks, um, crosswalks at poor location, sight lines. Um, some of the things that, that you know, are tangential to this is you know, um, pedestrian safe crossing, um, safe access to community parks like McLaughlin um, and Chartiers Park, you know, they're not really walkable. Um, moving, uh, improving uh, crosswalks, um, uh, reducing sight lines, um, making them more visible um, to the drivers, um, improving signage um, is another one. So um, solution, um, reviewing the location and, and uh, Crosswalk marking signage at intersections with poor sight lines. Um, you know, intersections of particular interest are Bower Hill, Railroad Street, um, Dewey Avenue, Dewey and Bank Streets. Um, potential solutions, um, you know, increasing signage with some of the new high visibility sign um, for, for existing crosswalks, better or different. Um, roadway markings to assist drivers to recognize um, crosswalks. Um, create a sidewalk maintenance program to identify sidewalks that, that are in need of repair in, in high pedestrian traffic areas um, and, and uh, move, um, make a plan to move out into the neighborhoods. Um, some of this is a zoning and, uh, enforcement work um, and some of it's working with um, you know, property owners. Um, to, to correct the issue. Um, and maybe some of we can get some um, neighborhood beautif beautification grants or something along those lines to help out with sidewalk repair. Um, solution partners, Bridgeville Public Safety Committee, PennDOT, Allegheny County. Um, there's probably some others out there. There's probably some other granting um, agencies out there. Again, um, it's gonna add value to the community um, and, and probably could be done without a whole lot of dollars. Comments, feedback? Yeah, I, uh, I got one, Dale. Okay. Um, you know, like, you know, we, we talk about all these different projects and, you know, and they're all, if you think about it, they're all combined. I mean, they're all connected in some way or the other. You know, the last time, you know, the last part we talked about beautification and we talked about signage, you know, part of the signage package was wayfaring, you know, uh, signs, you know, this way to the library, this way to here, which would tie right into, you know, your pedestrians for walkways with this one, um, just like parking would tie into, you know, your signage for parking. So, um, you know, when we put, we put these dollar signs on, uh, on, these, on some of these projects, well, it might be three dollar signs for one of them, but maybe half of that dollar sign goes to another project, another half goes to another project. So, um, I think this is really important. This is a uh, a very important 
um, piece of that we could work on. And I don't think it is expensive, but it's just a matter of identifying, you know, where are the, where do people walk? You know, you know, it would, it would, you would take some surveying going up to your hill and going to different parts of Bridgeville to the people who do walk and say, where, when you walk, which, which the routes you would take. And if you could walk a certain way, where would you like to see, you know, improvements? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, I, I, having done a little bit of traveling here recently and, and visiting some different communities, you know, it's amazing to me that, that what some communities have done, rather than just the two standard white lines for crosswalks, they've actually done some sort of a, a crosshatch pattern in the crosswalk. So it really draws drivers' attention that, hey, there's a crosswalk here. And, yeah. you know, with a high vis, just this high vis, I'm not talking about a lighted sign or anything like that, but just the, 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 the high vis green sign with the black lettering and that type of thing helps make those things stand out. And it just makes it a little bit safer. I agree. It's just a thought, you know, that's. Uh, and we, we have had some areas that have been, you know, brought to our attention that are, you know, really close to where, you know, the borough building, you know, if you go right up, at the intersection of Washington Pike and Bar Hill Road, yep. uh, planes up there. That's a very difficult place to cross if you're going to go to the other side. And then, obviously, down by the Dairy Delight, um, you know, we've had you know many people complain about that. And, and you know, in the summertime, you think about the Dairy Delight. You know, where do people park? They try to go over there, and you have a lot of foot traffic that walks there. Um, so there are issues where something where a high vis walkway like a crosswalk would be beneficial and it probably wouldn't be that much money. Right. Well, and you know, I mean, this is, this, the, the, the pedestrian safety was, was one of the things in the, in the comprehensive plan. Is it still an issue in Bridgeville? Does the planning commission feel it's still an issue in Bridgeville? I do. I, I think, I think uh, pedestrian traffic is extremely important in Bridgeville. I and, do. I see issues every day, especially when kids are in school. We're out of school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dale. Just a question. So I'm I'm thinking about the places that I walk, right? And one of the one of the things that pops to mind is like that alley between Chartier's Street and the uh, the Berg's parking lot, where like the road is just caving into the railroad line, like. Are those are there ap operational budget dollars set aside to address that as just part of borough maintenance or does all that require capital investment of some sort mike uh you, are you talking about warner avenue i don't know the name of it yeah I sure. think it is. it's just sure. right over the right over the the two-lane bridge there if you make the right and take the back way into birds yes actually on the list it gets fixed uh this year okay because I, I just i've noticed more orange cones being thrown into holes that have been there for some time and yeah. it doesn't seem a sustainable approach I don't know how much of this we would look to pick up as a capital project as opposed to. That's on the list this year to be, if, if anybody, any, uh, any of you council guys want to chime in, but I, I'm pretty sure it's still, um, I talked to Lori last week and um, when we started doing all the grants for all the flooding projects, that was one of the things that we had on our list to get taken care of. Um, it didn't get funding through the grants, but um, I believe borough is moving forward to get taken care of uh, regardless. Okay. That is, that is correct, Mike. And if I remember correctly, we had to apply for some permit or something. Okay. So that's, that's what the delay was. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would look at this then, Dale, as true improvements as opposed to any kind of maintenance of deteriorating conditions. Warner Avenue you're talking about. Well, that uh, there's some place up on Washington Pike, if I'm not mistaken, that's just got an orange cone thrown into a crumbling sidewalk somewhere. Um, okay, I, I'm still on pedestrian issues here. Agree, I, I, pedestrian as much as I'm walking a sidewalk and there's a cone in the hole. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> I just I'm trying to tease out how much that's going to be taken care of, and we don't need to set aside and ask for funding for it, as opposed to stuff that we say it's just on the sidelines until we approve it some other way yeah well and i i think you know in further discussions as we as we you know comb some of this stuff out that you know 
some of these issues will will find their find their home as for, you know pedestrian yeah. issue or or zoning or maintenance or that type of thing. So nope. real real quick, Dale, real quick. Um, when you talk about you know accessibility for pedestrians and you know how do we make it better? Are you talking primarily on crosswalks and connect connectivity, or like when Tim's talking about it when he's walking and he sees a you know part of the sidewalk that's the needs is in disrepair and needs fixed because yeah, it's, it's it's sidewalks and crosswalks it's sidewalks through the neighborhoods and along main main because, because then you then you were you know playing devil's advocate sidewalks are the ability of the homeowner and the residents so now it becomes a matter of how, how much are we going to enforce that um you know to take care of you know do we tell the owner hey you got to take care of this because you well, know we're in town and fix your sidewalks well it's you know it's a matter of coming up with a plan for doing some of that stuff exactly you know and you know anything that we can do to help the borough council along with with some of this stuff and you know put together a to-do list for for you know some you know pedestrian stuff pedestrian issues then you know yep we're further along they're further along and the borough in, in, in its entirety is further along yep Again, about everything being connected. Now you have a zoning issue, which we talked about zoning the last time and zoning enforcement. Yeah, those stuff like that would fix this pro fix problem. Yeah. So, okay. Any other comments? Okay, moving along. Um, Joe put together. Joe Cower put together the um, traffic mitigation and improvements along fit, uh, Highway 50, Route 50. Um, the North End. Um, you know, we we kind of talked about this earlier in one of the, I think it was a February meeting. Um, but um, you know, the challenge is to change. You know, heavy traffic coming into Bridgeville, kind of a, a blighted corridor, unwelcoming gateway to the community. Um, you know, tangential or related areas that should be considered for full solution. Um, create a specific revitalization multi-municipal uh, traffic improvement plan to improve traffic flow into Bridgeville from Collier Township. Um, project area starting uh, in Collier Township at Mayor Street um, to at least Bower Hill Road in Bridgeville suggested possible four lanes of traffic two in each direction into to Bower Hill with dedicated turn lanes into Presley Road and Bower Hill Road. Um, Suggested concept of extending the existing railroad trestle, existing bridge over Chartier's Creek would also considered, be considered to make room for additional travel lanes. Need, work, need to work with Collier Township as uh, multiple exits from the shopping center are also a major source of the problem. Um, when roadway is being constructed, improve the aesthetics of the North Gateway with new sidewalks, ornamental lighting, New welcoming way, uh, wayfinding signage, blah blah blah. Um, essentially, continuing downtown streetscape into to the Collier border. Um, to capitalize on the infrastructure investment, consider rezoning Washington Avenue from Collier border to Bower Hill Road to not permit car sales lot or repair facilities. Zone properties for either commercial activities um, consistent with Kerwin Heights or, or downtown or either highly dense, high or, or either high density residential mixed to encourage more of a downtown feel throughout. Potential solution, improve gateway with additional travel lanes to facilitate travel, traffic to primary side streets um, of both Bower Hill Road and Presley better utilize, better usage of commercial properties along to the local tax base and move in, and more welcoming gateway to the community, improving property values, perception, and marketability of the borough. Um, as far as uh, solution partners and, and funding possibility, uh, Bridgeville Borough, Collier Township, SPC, uh, PennDOT, Chartiers Valley Flood Authority, Railroad, uh, majority in property owners, utility providers, Chartiers Valley Shopping Center. Um, funding, Commonwealth, uh, PennDOT, 
possible expertise awesome. regional funding request, um, lobby elected re representatives, both municipals, both municipalities, CDBG, I'm not sure what that is, and county gaming grants. Um, possible first steps for a solution, um, joint request. Uh, call you're in Bridgeville to PennDOT traffic engineer for partnership to create a draft traffic improvement plan. Maybe some of the design work could be done by PennDOT. Um, if not, council should consider increases in the engineering budget next year to start necessary design work. Start now seeking with the same with Collier commissioners. Um, future steps, develop formal engineering solutions, um, plan even if the Plan is extreme, such as removing structure in the, in the corridor. Seek grant funding work, municipal, multi municipal, uh, leveraging additional support and consideration, and recommend the project be designed and built in phases so that it is manageable to secure funding and realistic, realist, realistic action steps. Anticipated value is large. Um, Potential budget implication, uh, implications are large also. Um, I think this is a, a, a good, um, uh, one of the, a, a good project to, to start maybe um, biting our teeth into and, and um, you know, it's obviously gonna be a long-term, a long-term plan, but it's something that, that the planning commission could probably move forward with um, and, and look at. Commissioners? <laughs> I mean, I mean, right off the bat, your big partner would be Collier because you would be sharing this project with them. And they are, you know, I know that currently they are on board with uh, addressing this because it's a problem for them just as it is for us. So they would like to see something happen um, at that, at the bridge uh, coming down from Chartier's Valley, or actually from Great Southern, all the way down to, into Bridgeville. So, um, I mean, there's a there's the conversations have already started. Mike, do you want to talk about the task force Dawn started? Yeah, sure. Uh, one uh, one of the uh, I'm sorry. You're good. You know, As it, who's talking? Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, uh, uh, there one commissioner from Collier. She already contacted me and Joe, um, and has support uh, from from their commissioners to start a conversation. You know, to start working on uh, how we, you know, basically how we did it for the South End, and looking at how we work with South Fayette to get that project done. They wanted to kind of duplicate that on the North End. Uh, with the bridge project and increasing the capacity of the bridge uh, to in figuring out how to, you know, uh, fix the traffic problem that they have and that we have. Uh, one nice thing is we both, we share the same engineering firm. So uh, we, we had them come to a meeting. Uh, we invited our, we invited our state representative and had a uh, representative from our state senator at the meetings as well um, to kind of give us, Hey, you know where we're at with the meeting. You know where we're at with the project. What we still need to do. Um, you know, we're it's a long way off. Uh, there still needs to be. You know, we haven't. I don't think we have contacted PennDOT yet. You know, just like we did with uh, the South End. You know, we kind of got together with our task force and figured out what we wanted, and then we presented it to PennDOT, um, and then got the ball rolling that way. Um, so you know, we're in the initial stages, um, but we're you know, it's. Uh, the, the ball is rolling and there is cooperation there, which is a nice thing. Good. This is, this is Bill. A um, couple roadblocks, uh, and, and Mike's right to call your commissioners are on board. There's a, um, there's a reduction in funding for projects like this uh, and, and uh, both the Senator and the uh, representative warned us of that. So to get more attention from PennDOT, we've got to make it a bigger, uh, regional type of issue, and that's where the time comes into play. You, you, tying Tom's run into it, you know, not just coming down Kmart Hills, I'll call it, or Presley Road. They they said you have a better chance 
if you can make it a much larger issue and, and make it a regional thing. So uh, again, Mike's right, uh, you know, we share a, an engineer and that's great. I think getting both of them talking, uh, or you know, both communities talking through their engineer. The question I would, do you guys from a planning commission, do you guys interact or, or communicate with say Collier's planning commission at all? Have you heard anything about their plans down there? Haven't, haven't no. had any interaction with them. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's something we could start. Um, yeah, you know, again, as Mike said, you know, there's an there's a general interest, I think, from uh, from both commissioners over there and the council here, uh, and obviously you guys are are looking at it. If we could get everybody on the same page there, and, and maybe push the envelope with the senator and the commission or uh, the representative, uh, maybe we could force her hand a little bit to to try to find some money for us. I, yeah, I know I, that. Go ahead, Joe. I know that one of the concerns Collier has is obviously you got these big shopping centers and that drives some of their income that comes into their budgets. And, you know, they want to have these places uh, for people to want to go to the, the shopping. And, you know, sometimes that hill is, is the hill that people try to stay away from near Bob Evans, all the way down to the chamber building. So uh, that's, I know Dawn personally, and that's kind of how, she and I were just talking. We saw each other one day and we just started talking about it. And this was last year sometime. That's when we uh, um, sat down with Mike and in uh, the last meeting I think we had with the uh, representatives, uh, that's when Bill uh, was involved too. And we, it, it's a long, long-term project, but it, it's it's good that you're at least having some conversations about it. Uh, yeah, and it's it's one of those things. Yeah, it's going to be a long-term project, but it's it's... You know, now's the time to be starting to think about, well, 10 years ago was the time to start thinking about it, but it, it's time to, you know, um, take a look at it and, and maybe push it along a little bit. At least get it on the, get it on the vision of the, the planning commission and the, the council. Well, and not to belabor, but when you start talking about maybe their planning commission too, somehow they were able to get the, uh, the conception of a uh, sheets and a, <laughs> another wedding facility that's going up there and, and tying in the, uh, you know, the reorganizing of, of uh, vanadium onto the 79, that's all going on and, and really only going to increase traffic coming into that area. So somehow in the middle, you know, we got to get connected there. Yeah. Okay. Planning commissioners, anything else? nothing okay um we're running short on time here um i, I want to open it up to have time to open it up to, for public comment tim if you don't mind we'll we'll save yours for next month yep okay. um let's see pat you were on first you got sure um, regarding parking, uh, there is permit parking presently in Bridgeville. The parking authority administers it. Uh, uh, they administer permits for both on-street parking and permit parking in the parking lot. Um, so it is uh, it is being done. Um, as far as parking to take the bus, you know, that that issue goes back thirty year, thirty forty years, um, and it's sort of a it, it's sort of there, but recently, and I, I just don't, I don't find a whole lot of people coming to either council meetings or planning or parking authority regarding people that are parking to take the bus. That might exist, but I'd like to find an actual complaint. Um, it, historically, it's been there, but with the park and rides that have been developed, and with South Hills Village and the T, I think that that has decrease the amount of the number of people that are parking and taking the bus. Uh, the larger issue I would submit to you is the expansion of parking. Um, and that is where I would hope that the Planning Commission would find a place, especially in the north end of Washington Avenue, to expand parking. The Parking Authority administers parking. They have a search committee. Laura Dekelwa heads it. It has not been. It has not been able to find 
a spot for parking in Bridgeville for several years. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the planning commission could help by saying, you really want to go and put parking here because that will allow the community around that area to thrive. You talk to, uh, you look at Joe Cower's plans or a presentation on the North end. You look at a partnership with call your township that all ties into the North end. Um, and, uh, you know, I would point out that one of the first steps is taking that uh, that engineer and perhaps splitting the bill to update the uh, the traffic uh, plan that Mike Haberman at Gateway prepared, you know, many years ago, which is a good foundation to, that the borough may start with um, in a partnership with Collier and uh, maybe split the cost of updating that. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. You know, and... and we will um, we will certainly be busy Hello. with this again and, and fine tuning it. Mm -hmm. You know, as as we go along. Hmm. <clears throat> so. All right. Okay, um, Bob. Yes. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, excuse me. I'm. Uh, I was, excuse me, uh, can every, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Bob. Yeah, okay. I was happy to hear that a couple of you guys brought up the point that uh, only by developing a comprehensive traf uh, road plan or network in the community in Bridgeville that will be beneficial <clears throat> to a larger area, to the community of South Fed, uh, uh, Collier, and Upper St. Clair, that's the key to everything. And I want wanted to mention that uh, I know you're interested in solving the traffic, but the solution to the traffic problem is, is, has, been, uh, saw, has been identified as far back as 20 years ago by six different city planners. But, but at any rate, the primary reason is to to Bridgeville's business districts have to be made as easy to get to as the business districts and the competitive communities around us, and that can be done. I might mention one other thing of importance. Um, the One of the main roadblocks that I'm sure many of you have heard from PennDOT and repeated by the public officials in our three or four communities is the uh, uh, railroad bridge uh, over top of Washington uh, Pike, I think it's the Br Bridgeville, uh, Wheeling, uh, Lake Erie Railroad. To make a long story short, uh, the past uh, couple of weeks, I designed a plan that I sent to them today on how the bridge does not have to be replaced, but it uh, can be extended. But uh, I talked to a couple of traffic engineers the past week about the design. They think it's a good idea. But uh, one of the engineers mentioned that one of the ways to get the uh, railroad company officials to be more reasonable is through the Public Utilities Commission. I never heard about that approach before. But at any rate, he emphasized that the Bridgeville uh, officials, we have to have a fixed comprehensive plan that shows it's a major uh, 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 road network that will help all the four communities in the area before you even approach major federal, state, and county funding funders and, and get the help of the Public uh, Utility Commission. And uh, uh, the, uh, the key thing is increasing commercial tax revenue into the community to relieve the people of the tax burden that they're under. But more importantly, the costs, the municipal costs are going to rise every year more rapidly than they, they have been. And we need greater income from our two business districts uh, to keep up with that. And I, uh, one other thing I might mention to you, in terms of the park, parking problem, uh, you, you, if the parking authority said that there is no problem, or maybe I misunderstood what one of you mentioned, um, the, you have to remember that 50% of the people that 
who live within, let's say, a five mile radius of Bridgeville, they don't drive to the Bridgeville South Fayette call your business districts anymore because of the traffic. But as a result, when you're trying to estimate uh, the amount of parking spaces you need, that comes into consideration. And the way that I've always watched some of the experts determine the amount of parking a community needs is they measure the floor space of um, the the commercial floor space, the office floor space, and the residential floor space. And I guess there's some sort of formula that describes how many parking spaces per each of those three categories are needed. That's the way to do it. But at any rate, everything, it seems to me that the information I've been receiving, everything comes down to a very aggressive uh, uh, development of a comprehensive plan that solves the traffic congestion problem, doesn't uh, make it a little bit less, and it solves the parking problem. If we do those two things, uh, I think Bridgeville could become a very uh, wealthy community. And uh, anyway, that's the advice that uh, I'm just passing along to you guys. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your time. See. Ya. Thank you, Bob. And again, um, you know, these what we've been doing last meeting, this meeting, and and we'll finish the next meeting is basically just some preliminary discussions about topics and and trying to put some things together for, for the future of, of the planning commission, trying to give us some uh, a roadmap, if you will, of, of projects to start thinking about and start planning. So Tim, you got anything to add? Um, no, other than if you guys can follow suit with what we did last meeting and send me um, your thoughts with respect to scoring for the one, two, three, four issues we went through tonight, that would be awesome. And I'll keep the updated version on this side. Okay. Cheryl, you got anything to add? No, sir. Thank you. All right. I take a motion to adjourn. I make the motion. Tim made the motion. Who made the second? I'll second. Justine. Okay. All in favor say aye. 